We're back at the shop with the 1968 Cougar that was thoroughly rusted. And after we have replaced the torque boxes and replaced the floor pans, you can see what's going on. And there's other places we can show you where if you ever happen to buy a 64 to 1969 Mustang, Cougar, Fairlane, you know, the, the early Ford cars, before you get stuck with this same situation, look in these vulnerable positions for rust so that you don't end up with the same amount of work. Okay, the gusset has a lot to do with tying them frame rails that hold the motor to this torque box that ties into the rocker panel and there's a gusset in the back here so this whole thing makes like a big box going to that frame rail the frame has been wrapped with eighth inch steel and this is all eighth inch metal it's overkill compared to what was from the factory as you look inside then you'll see how the thin little floor pan comes up and ties in with that whole box that's underneath and then this rocker panel it's tied into there and then that energy goes back into this area where the seat pan is tied in with this drive shaft hump then you got to dip down and the same thing goes back so it just is a series of like trusses going across the two rails of the rockers. Back in the day we used to drive these things with the rockers totally rusted out and you wonder why it just didn't bend in half. But the same thing had to go for both sides. Normally these panels are in a front section, the shock towers, then a back section, and then it gets tied into the firewall. Well, where they overlap the metal, you see where these spot welds are? These were sandwiched together and just totally rusted, so you lose the integrity of this rail, and when the fenders are bolted onto this, then that ties that up like a box. Those were all flimsy, I mean, it was, it was junk. After these have all been tied in, then you can see where the water slings off of the tire and throws up into here, and this was all rusted out. You can see where the bottom of the rock, I mean the firewall was all rotted. And it's the same thing, it's worse on the driver's side. And this thing was Z-Bart. A lot of times that Z-Bart was just like a tarry, you know, coating, and then when the tar dried out, it made a crack, and then water would get in between the tar and the metal, and it just never got a chance to dry out. You see where the tires throw off water and it flies up under here and it sits in this channel. And I mean, it, if water continued to go in there, your gauges would get wet. <laughs> but there's another, there's another panel between here. It's just a series of panels all sandwiched together. There's three layers that are all, it's everything always folded over so that it, you know, gives it rigidity. But each layer of sheet metal is just paper thin. We're removing all the old petroleum based seam sealer and then we'll use lacquer thinner, get this thing all cleaned out, scuff it down, paint it, then use seam sealer where all the patches are and then he's going to use that um, truck bed liner and that kind of dampens sound and it'll seal it up so it won't rust out anymore. of tools for getting at rust this is really priceless if you had a plasma cutter it would even be better but this with a real 
abrasive, you know, a carbide tip. You can get in, you can hog out holes bigger. We'll see what happens. But it's loud. Okay, this is basic uh, metal repair 101 and we just made a template out of cardboard that fits the hole and you see it goes beyond, fits under here and then after we get this piece in then we'll make the part that connects, connects the firewall to there and we'll weld that. But we work one stage at a time. You know, these are pretty rinky dink tools, and you probably got a lot better stuff in your own garage. But when you're 16 years old and you're just starting out with nothing in your parents' garage, a grinder, hand grinders, and torches, a welder, you can probably get any job done. Once you start selling cars and you can start buying more tools, work your way up to a better shop. And the contour, which would be holding metal away, that would be too far for your weld to connect. I'm just cheaply changing the shape of this metal with two hammers. You're not supposed to ever hammer two hammers together, but I don't have anything else. So I just marked where it had to be, opened up the vise to the right width, to straighten this out. And you see those two dimples? It fits like a glove.